Welcome to our online engage groups. We're going to kick off our session by answering this question. What motivates you to change? Share with the group or write it out in your journal. Press pause and then click play when you have finished. Even if you're not a Christian, most people are looking for a better version of themselves. The local Barnes and Noble stores have several aisles dedicated to these self-help type of books. I think any decent human being would say they would like to be better. I don't want us to think of being better, but transformed. The question is, transformed into what? Change usually comes when the pain becomes too great to bear or we are fearful of regret. Most of us are motivated this way to change, but we never really get to the core of changing. The core of who we are is found in our heart, the essence of our being. This is our thoughts, our values, our attitudes, our dreams, and our desires. And out of this core will come our behaviors. That's the things people see, how we act. So if we are just changing our behaviors, we are really only addressing behavioral modifications. This is not becoming transformed. Transformation comes when we get at the core. When we allow the Holy Spirit to change our thoughts, our values, our attitudes, our dreams, and desires. When our heart becomes one with His, this comes from trusting that God is good and that you will allow Him to be Lord. You know, this is a term that we aren't used to. But people in Jesus' time understood kings and kingdoms. A peasant didn't tell the Lord what he should do. He was led by his Lord to action. It was a total and full surrender to the will and the leadership of that Lord. Once we surrender our will to him, the Holy Spirit then can move in and start to transform our heart. But that takes a daily surrender of those places that you, you might not want to give up. It's like I said about your house. When someone is coming over, you pick up the areas of the house you know they will be in. But what people don't see is the spare bedroom where all the clutter you gathered and you just threw it in on the bed. You know, we're not just talking about moving things around in your life or in your heart. We're talking about allowing God to have the keys and the deed to your house, or what the Bible calls your temple. Let's read 1 Corinthians 6, starting in verse 9. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor men who submit to or perform homosexual acts, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor verbal abusers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Everything is permissible to, for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not intended for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By His power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and He will raise us also. 
Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Or don't you know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a man can commit is outside the body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, from whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. Hey, we all followed the desires of our old self. This is what we did when we didn't know Christ. And many of these lustful desires, they come from our feelings. And those feelings, those attitudes, those thoughts, those desires, they become our behaviors. When Jesus is Lord, you submit to his lordship. That doesn't mean your feelings go away. Your thoughts, your values, attitudes, dreams, and desires are all there. But now you surrender them to God and you allow him to change you, or like it says, to sanctify you. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. And this takes a daily surrender. So you don't stay where you're at. Because we learned on Sunday, if you stay where you're at, you might end up off worse than you were before. So what do we do? We become transformed into the image of Christ. We put off our old self and we become transformed into his image. To end our session, I want you to read Ephesians 4, 17 through 32 as a group. Then go over the discussion questions and homework that is in the description page. Listen, we all get stuck sometimes in our growth, but you don't have to stay there. This is going to be a daily surrender, and don't think that you have to have it all figured out right out of the gate. This takes time, a daily surrender of all of these areas to the Lord. We're on this journey with you. You're not alone. But remember, we have to renew our hearts and our minds. And then we will be transformed into his wonderful image. It's by his work that we are saved. We'll see you again next week.